is a Kinder Egg. It's a, and I'm sorry you ate donut, Luke. I could have gave you a Kinder Egg, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. But this bad boy here is a combination of delicious chocolate and a really cool ass toy. If you answer questions, if you answer questions, if you ask questions and have answers to questions that we have, we will hook you up with a Kinder Egg. If you do, do not participate and actually make me leave with all those donuts and and uh, Timbits and kill me, we will give you one of these, my fisherman's friend, which is the most disgusting thing in the world. So you decide, either you get an awesome Kinder Egg, a cool donut like our friend Luke had, <laughs> or you're going to get one of these. All right. First question, guys. Anybody been to a movie lately? Yes, we did. Avengers? Was it good? Did you do any research online about Avengers? No. It's okay, Max. <laughs> kind of killing me, but it's all good. Don't worry. You're, you're getting kicked right anyway. Does anybody else do research other than Max online? I don't remember the last time you did research online. You do research online? For, uh, movies? for movies? Just say yes. <laughs> yes. Hey! Is that a girl? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So. Everybody else, other than our two friends here, <laughs> for the most part, will do research on movies online before they go see it. But it's amazing how much research you do, I'm going backwards, for a movie, which is about $15, and yet we don't do that much research. Oh, Lord, this is going to be one of those days. <laughs> All right, Techie Lawrence. Yeah. You want to make this stuff moving? Uh, turn it off. <laughs> it probably, if you have it uh, an auto page, I'll just see if I can. Not certain. So as I was saying, what happens is, is it's amazing how much research you do for a fifteen dollar movie, but yet when you're looking for a house and you're trying to pick out your real estate agent, your mortgage broker, your home inspector. People just rely on the word of a friend or a family member who you actually just feel like you're obligated to use. Oh my good Lord, this I've never seen. What, what system are you using? As soon as I touch everything. Yeah, that's, that was the issue. I'm just we trying suck. to disable. <laughs> we no, suck. it's the system. Computer's always picky. Somebody dancing in front. Uh, so right now. Try it again. See if that. Everyone's thinking two years and you haven't gotten a straight note. Right now. Right now. Because every time we have a new system. Yeah. So we just got this this monitor back. We didn't have it. We, we had a different uh, setup. Sorry, guys. No, I, I disabled it and see if that works. Hey. I think, I think we're good. We're not moving. All right, guys, for a Kinder Egg. It's going through again. It's oh, going to have to be on a page by page to save all the. I think I just leave it like that. Yeah, just leave it like that. Yeah. All right, guys, so this bad boy here. This beautiful property was a bank repo. Can anybody tell from this picture why it became a bank repo? And you can actually tell from the picture itself. It's for one of these bad boys. Oh. 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 
All right. Because the person couldn't afford it. So, very good. So, what it is, and actually the person can't afford it, is a correct answer, but not the answer I was looking for. The answer I was looking for was the apartment building in back. So, this actual property, thank you. So this particular property is gorgeous, beautiful home. There's no issues with it. People assume when there's a bank record, there's an issue with the house. There's nothing wrong with this house. Minus the fact that when you went in your backyard, you had 30 to 40 people hanging out with you at all times. So what happened was, is every single time somebody came to view the property, they were like, this is ridiculous. We would never want to live here. So even if you buy in the right area, which is the number one thing in real estate location, you still have to be cautious about other factors that may affect your resale. So again, if you buy, because everybody's always asking for it, do you have access to repos and foreclosures and everything? You have to remember, they are repos and foreclosures for a reason. The seller can't sell it to make enough money to either pay off the mortgage or to even recoup what they really need out of it. So something to take into account. Does anybody know how much it costs to hire a real estate agent? McCown, go ahead. Can't remember, honestly. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this guy was here before. <laughs> my star student. Listen, I think business-wise, I don't That's think agent-wise. Okay. My mindset is different now. This is money. <laughs> for you. No, Not it's for me. For me, it's not. For you, look. No. This is how much it costs. For me, zero. For me, it's a money loss. Agent. It costs. It costs zero. <laughs> so to hire your own buyer agent costs you nothing. So. People fall in the trap of, okay, well, I'm going to go straight to a seller and try to get a deal out of it because they're going to tell you that they're going to save you, they're going to take off the commission out of it. Well, you don't even know what it's worth. So how do you even know what they're doing? For the most part, they're just trying to save themselves a dollar and not you. So that's something you'll have to watch out for. Buyer closing cost. Now, these are the hidden fees that a lot of people don't realize when it comes to closing day and you're meeting with the lawyer and you're gonna, he's gonna ask you for the biggest bill you're ever going to have. So when you see an oil tank on a property, the seller is gonna fill that oil tank and you're gonna reimburse them for a full tank of oil. When you see that beautiful propane fireplace, the propane, fi the propane tank is going to be filled and you're gonna reimburse them for a full tank of propane. Taxes. Tax. Yes, sir. Is that a legal contract, or is that just the seller flexing their muscles and saying, if you don't do this, then it deals off? No, no. So, so what it is, is it's, it's part of the contract. So they need to get reimbursed for whatever's in the tank, right? The issue is, is we rely on gauges. Gauges aren't, we, you never know if they're working. You, you won't actually know if the tank's full or not. So what they do is they fill the tank, you get a top-up slip from, a, from an oil company or paint company saying that they filled it. That's the only way we actually know for a fact right. how much fuel is actually in the tank. Okay. That's the reason why it's worked that way. We can easily put in any agreement that we don't want an adjustment. So for example, let's say the oil tank is like 17 years old. And you're like, well, I'm going to replace this. You don't want them to fill that. So what you do is we put in the contract that we don't want you to fill the tank because we're going to replace it. And that's, so again, everything can be altered, but these are some of the things that you have to take into account that, because the seller's going to want to get reimbursed for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the contract, it's in the yeah. yeah. The agreement is you adjust the fuel on premises, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, so the best way to know is to fill the tank or make her. So, <laughs> so guys, uh, Mikhail over here, he doesn't know how much a real estate agent costs, but he had no problem reminding me that this gentleman is owed a kinder egg. <laughs>
So, <laughs> the kinder egg. <laughs> I'm like, that, that's good, thank you. Thank you, you don't know how much I'm worth, but that's good. <laughs> thank you. You the guy in front. <laughs> My star student. Tax adjustment. So taxes are prorated from the day that you take the property over to what the seller already has prepaid. So there's no set amount. It all depends on when you close. And taxes are paid in two increments a year. Carlos. And on this list, it is in the package, right? Yes. Just, just, just for people that yeah. are you know, you can't see it, don't worry too much. It's in the package. Yeah. And condo fees. Condo fees are also the same, prorated from the day that you take it over to what they already have prepaid. Now, other than the two gentlemen that came early that might have gone in, yes? I just saw something I have a question about. Could you just go back to the left side? Yep. Just where it says up there that the mortgage insurance is applicable if the loan is more than 80% of the purchase price. That is about, uh, like, your, you can affect that level of insurance based on your down payment. So that's mortgage insurance. So. I'll actually let Blake go into that because he's going to be talking about that in the slide when the mortgage comes. That's a very good question. You still get a Kinder Egg. <laughs> I'm still not going to answer I'm it. I'm watching. Blake won't. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> we get security here. Get this guy in here, Doc. <laughs> I'm a security. All right. Does anybody know? Well, does anybody know what deed transfer tax is? Yeah. I'm assuming it's the transfer of the cost it takes to transfer the deed from the owner of the house to the owner of the house. So, what it is is a money grab from the man. <laughs> that's that's the cold notes version of what it is. Does anybody know how much deed transfer tax is? It's in your book, so I'm glad that nobody cheated. And you're cheating right now. I like it. <laughs> no, I like it. Listen, I like I am not going to get mad at you for cheating because I respect that. Because I would do the same thing. Deed transfer tax is 1.5% of the purchase price. So no matter what you buy, you buy a $200,000 house, you're going to pay $3,000 to the man. Non-negotiable. The, the, the fuel adjustment, there's a lot of things that you can kind of negotiate. The man is the man. He's going to get his money. That guy. Now, who enjoys looking at properties online? That's right, we all do. Be very cautious of looking at properties online. The only reason why I say that is what you think you're getting isn't always what you get. You assume you're going to get one thing, and you get that. You're actually, for the most part, you're going to be disappointed. Because, because properties, uh, like, what we do nowadays is unbelievable. We, we tend to bring stagers in, we have photographers in, and some agents go buck wild and they start editing and photoshopping the properties, and you're going to get to the house and you're going to be like, what is this? This is not the same house. Now, any of my listings, they are beautiful. So you're safe. If you're anything that I have listed, because it's money. So it's safe. But everybody else, con artists. <laughs> Con artist. Yeah. So next step is at the end of the class. There we have your information. We're going to send you just a, a quick rundown and just see if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one meeting just to see if to get to the next step. So don't be uh, don't be surprised when we contact you. Now, next step. Blake Wilson. So we actually miss your opening slide now. No, that's the new opening slide. Oh, this is the new one? We just changed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so Blake Wilson, he has a group. Uh, he's specialized with first-time home buyers and self-employed people with small business owners, guys. Without further ado, Blake Wilson. First thing I should do is make Zach. Good stuff. Yeah. So I guess... Uh, like a realtor, there's no cost to using a mortgage broker. So what we're, our role is, is that we take your information, we help you. We're basically your advocate between you and the bank or the different lender. 
When you walk into the bank, you don't know what to tell them. You don't know what documents they might need, and you're probably nervous, and you're worried you might say the wrong thing, and they might decline you, because that, that can be scary. And uh, like Nas mentioned, too, we do focus on, obviously, first-time home buyers, but being self-employed can be extra challenging, too, just because of how you might claim your income. If you have a good account, and you're probably not claiming much income, which is, makes it harder to qualify for things. <coughs> but um, So one thing we do, we shop over 50 lenders um, on your behalf with one credit hit. So if you go from bank to bank to bank, you're going to get your credit hit multiple times, which actually could impact you actually getting approved for a loan um, or, and, and other types of credit. Um, and we can help with um, your ongoing, uh, ongoing planning. So when we look at a transaction, we don't always only look at the first transaction. I've had first-time home buyers buy a fourplex before because they wanted to do that with 10% down, and then in a couple of years buy a duplex and then buy their dream home, all while doing that, while using mortgage insurance, which we'll get to in a second, just about how that's included and that it's, um, it is if you have less than a 20% down payment. Okay, so we have a process that we go through. So we start off with a blue sky session where we really talk about what your goals are, what your plans are, and what your dreams are. In a lot of your cases, you're obviously looking to buy your first house or in the market for that. Um, then you get pre-approved, we complete an application, um, see what you can qualify for, you get to go shopping. Um, from there, we actually select the lender because sometimes it can depend on the property, um, which one might be the best fit, or else who might have the best rate at the time or who might be the best fit for you. And then we work with you to satisfy all the click, uh, conditions, and then it goes to your lawyer, and you get to go through all the fun legal documents and get all that stuff filed. We'll let the lawyer go into his stuff later. Um, <clears throat> we don't need to go into that one too much. Okay, so pre-approvals. One thing, guys, on pre-approvals, you might see that, you know, get it pre-approved in 30 seconds. Those things there, they're not really fully pre-approving you. They're looking at the numbers that you make for income, the debt that you put in there, and saying, hmm, you probably can afford a mortgage of this amount. Um, sometimes pre-approvals are just rate holds, where they're basically holding a rate for 90 or 120 days. They're not actually underwriting your file. Um, so just caution on that. We've had, I've had realtors call the day before financing conditions coming up because they had a pre-approval at their bank, and in fact, they weren't actually pre-approved and they should have been buying a house that was well, significantly less than what they were looking at. So it can happen, so just really watch that you do get a real pre-approval and that um, you are able to uh, pull off the purchase that you're looking to do. So down payment, so this is where we get into the mortgage insurance. Minimum 5% down is usually required, but there are zero down mortgages available where basically you're borrowing the down payment, the lender will lend you the money for the down payment, as well as uh, do the mortgage for you. <coughs> the mortgage insurance, uh, the premiums are 4% if you're putting 5% down. That gets added to the mortgage. So if you're putting 5% down on a property, to so say you're putting down 5%, uh, you're actually going to end up with a 99%, basically a mortgage for 99% of the purchase price because they're adding the mortgage insurance on. It's not at closing. You don't have to pay for it at closing, but you got to pay for it at some point. So you're paying for the privilege to put less money down. And what mortgage insurance is, you're still going to have to buy regular house insurance for fire insurance. Mortgage insurance basically protects the bank. So if you guys don't pay, CMHC or Genworth or the other mortgage insurer, can to guarantee, would essentially pay the lender back and make it whole. They're all government backed, which is why there's been so many changes to the mortgage industry recently. Uh, the government's really clamped down um, on uh, what they're allowing. You've probably seen things in the news about stress tests and things like that. And with the stress test they're talking about, if you've heard about that at all, is basically you might pay a rate of, say, 3%. We have to qualify you at 5.34% right now. So you're really qualifying at a rate that's over 2% higher than you're actually paying. So it really has reduced a lot of people's buying power, so it can really make things a little bit more challenging. So hopefully they make some adjustments to it, because really this is the, the first time home buyers is where it's really hurting people. Um, but uh, we're still able to get deals done, but we just got to be a little bit uh, more creative. So yeah, I guess a little bit more about mortgage insurance. So if you're putting less than 20% down, you need mortgage insurance. Um, it's Basically, if you qualify for a mortgage, really, you're probably going to be able to qualify there. Uh, that being said, if you have 20% down, we have alternative lenders. Um, so even if you have some you know, bloopers in your credit history or you're, um, you, know, you're, you have no credit, for example, if you have a hefty down payment, then we can still have lenders that will approve it as long as you're buying with an HRM or a ma another major center. And also, they work quite well for self-employed borrowers. Um, so yeah, if you're self-employed and you don't claim a lot of income, as long as you have cash flow, there still are financing solutions available for you. You just might pay a higher interest rate, but the higher interest rate is generally more than offset with what you're saving in taxes. Why? 
Okay, first response improvement. So say you see that dream house. Oh, sorry. Why? What's that, sorry? You say uh, high interest rate and offset with high taxes. Okay, so if you're, um, for example, I, I have some clients that are self-employed. On their tax return, they might claim 30 grand. But um, I need to qualify for that mortgage. They might need an income of $100,000. Their business does a lot of revenue, so I can justify to a lender, like some lenders don't even ask for tax returns, so I can justify that they have cash flow equivalent to 